Hi everyone, it's Emmanuel here. I want to ask you this question. What if today is the last chance that God gives you to make right with Him? Whether it is to completely abandon yourself, if you've never been a believer before, whether God is calling you to repent of your sin and trust in Jesus, or whether you've been in church for many years and you know you're backslidden, or whether you are lukewarm, or whether you're complacent with your faith, and God is saying, what if today God is saying, today, is the last chance that I will give you to make right with me. And after the day, there will be no other chances because you simply would not feel the drawing of my Holy Spirit anymore. If that is the case today, would you turn back to Him? And would you make right with Him or would you still put it off? Because the scripture that I want to share with you today, there in the book of Acts, there is a person, okay, which is called the Governor Felix, which I want to talk to you about today, which he was on that dangerous path of not being saved at the end. Even he was given a chance to believe in Jesus Christ. And it's such a tragic thing because in this um, account, okay, first of all, I want to give you a little bit of background. Paul was basically preaching the gospel to the Jews, okay? But then um, he was being persecuted. He's causing riots in the cities and uh, the Jews want to lay hold on him, okay? But um, uh, and, and pretty much want to eliminate him. But then the soldiers came and took him violently away from this crowd and later sent him to Governor Felix. We find this account um, starting in Acts chapter 23 all the way to Acts chapter 24, which we're going to talk about today. And in Acts chapter 24, um, when the Governor Felix was hearing this case, Paul starts defending himself. I don't have time to go through it. You can read the entire Acts chapter 24. But one of the things that he defended himself with is something that is worth noting. Okay, in verse... 16, Acts chapter 24, actually back up uh, one verse earlier, uh, Acts chapter 24, verse 15, Paul says, I have hope in God, which they themselves, the Jews, also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense, toward God and men. And this is not the main point, but I want to talk about it in passing, okay? Paul, when he was uh, defending the, the gospel, what he was talking about, he was saying, I'm telling these people, I believe in God. And they accept that. They, they accept the fact that, you know, I believe in God. And he's talking about that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both the unjust and the just. And Jesus talked about this in the Gospels, and we find it in the rest of the, uh, in the, rest of the epistles, and, and the whole Bible talks about there will be a day where God will judge the whole world in righteousness. And Paul says, because of this, knowing that there will be a day when there is a resurrection of the just and unjust, and we're going to have to give an account before God, what does Paul say? He says, this being so, I myself always... Okay, always strive, okay, strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. And as we read on later, and even in the epistles of Paul, we know what he's talking about. He's talking about basically, in another epistle, that he says, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And that's why we need to live a life that is clean, that is holy, that is pure in heart and motives and deeds and words and everything before God. Because we know one day God is going to come back and judge the whole world in righteousness. So the question for you and I to ask today is, are we living in such a fashion that we're always striving, always striving to have a conscience pure before God? You know, or are we going to let our conscience get tainted a little bit sometimes? You know, oh, well, you know, might as well download this pirated software. I might as well download this pirated MP3 or movie and watch online. Or might as well, you know, plan how to maybe cheat on the taxes a little bit. You know, because the government is taking so much money from me and in a way that's not right. I'm making so much in the business or whatever. You know, or maybe, you know, um, I'm going to, you know, do a little bit of gossip of this person. You know, maybe whatever it is. Whatever it is, are you allowing your conscience to be tainted in such a way that maybe nobody knows? But Paul is saying that there is one day when the just and the unjust will have a resurrection, the unjust will be cast into the lake of fire. That's a great white throne judgment of God. But those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they will have the blood of Jesus who wash them clean and they will enter heaven. And again, unfortunately, the Bible tells us that that number of those who enter into the kingdom of heaven, those whose names are written in the book of life, are very few. 
and from and and we know that from scriptures like Luke chapter 13 verse 23 to 24 uh Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 Jesus says many will seek to enter in but will not be able to and it's very few and that is why you and I we need to pray first for ourselves that we will, we will always keep a conscience clean and pure before God just like what John talks about he who has this hope hoping God purifies himself Okay, we must do this. We must, not, we must not jeopardize our salvation in any way right now by tainting our conscience. If, if something is, is in us, we feel, oh, I don't know if that's right or wrong. That probably is an indication that something is maybe not right. Because um, again, First John tells us that if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. So may we always strive like Paul to have a conscience, okay, that is without offense toward God and toward men, because we know that one day we're going to stand before Him. Okay, now that was a point in passing. But as we read on, okay, Felix, the governor Felix, basically adjourned the meeting. He's saying that when this other uh, commander comes, I'm going to hear your case, okay, and for a period of two years, it says here in, in the book of Acts, the governor Felix was talking to Paul and he didn't, he basically wanted to do him a little favor. He says, let people visit Paul and let people bring food to him, all this stuff. Um, but the thing is, okay, uh, what we have to find out in verse 25, this is a very important thing, okay? It says, starting in verse 24, it says that after some days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. So Felix is saying, bring Paul over here. I want to hear about the faith in Christ. Okay, I can't get any more clear than that. And what did Paul tell him about this faith in Christ? You read in verse 25. And compare that with the quote-unquote faith in Christ. Compare that with the gospel that we hear today and see if you find a difference. In verse 25, this is the faith in Christ that Paul talked about. Now, as he, Paul, reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. And we find out later on, Paul, um, Paul basically talked to Felix for a period of two years. And Felix didn't do, want to do anything because all he wanted was that Paul would give him some money that Felix would release him. But of course, Paul never did that. He stayed there. All this governor Felix wanted was some money from Paul so that he can release him. And when Paul talked to him about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, what did this governor Felix do? He, Felix was afraid. He got afraid. There's a judgment to come? I have to be accountable for my sins? What, living a life of self-control, of righteousness? I don't want to hear that stuff. You know what, Paul, just, just, just go for now. When, I'm, when, I, when I have a convenient time, I will call for you. Man, that's just, I mean, that's just tragic. Because think about it today. How many people, when you want to tell them about the gospel, not the feel-good gospel, when you tell them the real gospel, that you've got to repent of your sins and turn to Jesus and live a new life through the blood of Jesus. How many people tell today, yeah, you know, I'm kind of busy, you know. I kind of don't really have time for God right now because, I, you know, I'm studying this in school. I'm doing that project at work and I don't really have time right now. And guys, let me tell you something. If you don't have time for God right, if you don't have time, quote unquote, for God right now, like when the tribulation comes, when the great tribulation comes, when the economy collapses, when there's the third world war breaks out, and all these are coming at the brink, we're at the brink of all these end time events. When that happens, you are not going to have time. You know, you're not going to have the heart to come to God. Because look at this Governor Felix. He delayed. He's like, I don't want to hear it. He was afraid. Let me tell you something. When you preach the gospel in truth, not the watered-down gospel, oh, God loves you, loves you, loves you. Just believe, believe, believe. Nothing about, you know, repentance. You know, you can claim that kind of gospel. I've seen testimonies, uh, quote-unquote testimonies of people saying, oh, you know, that person was in drugs and he was doing all these things. And, and you know, but I know the way that the way to preaching that gospel is just a be just believe gospel. There's nothing about repentance. It's just all about God's love, God's goodness. And guess what? I mean, that, after that person put out the testimony, I, I um, somehow I, I saw later, maybe like a few months later, that person now uh, goes back to saying that he is um, an atheist publicly. So how do we come to a 
saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. On the other hand, I can tell you another testimony of another person that I know who has been, and I know him personally, who has been in drugs and doing many different things. It backs, like very, he was, it's not even a backslidden life. He didn't even know Jesus before then. But he came to God, no, repenting of his sins. Did he know the goodness, goodness of God? Yes, he did. He, does he know the love of God? Yes, he did. Did he believe? Yes, he did. But this is one thing that you're going to know. He also knew he needed to repent of his sins. And now today, he's going on the streets, preaching the gospel, calling people to repentance. And yes, there are different times that, you know, we share together and he, and, and he may, you know, and I'm not saying I'm perfect either. I'm still working on my salvation in fear and trembling. But this brother and I, he is still in his salvation right now. Whereas, the, whereas a person who was told that they just need to only believe, you know, it's, it's not really about you trying to change and repent of your sins. It's not about that because Jesus done everything on the cross. Whereas that person now turned out to be, after a few months, he calls himself an atheist. And so why do you think today in the church, for those who go to church today, and again, I, when I talk about the church, understand my heart, I'm not trying to bash the church. You know, like, this is the church of Jesus Christ. This is supposedly the bride, the holy, spotless, pure bride that Jesus is going to come back for in the book of Ephesians. And yet Jesus says, so few are those who are the, those five wise virgins. So few are those who are pure waiting for Him because so many want to be mingled around with the things of life, want to get into the things of the world while claiming this only believe gospel, claiming that the finished work of Christ when when what God, I mean the Bible, I mean those who claim Paul, Paul was the one who also talked about righteousness. He reasoned about righteousness, okay? Obviously, when he talked about righteousness, he was talking to the Jews, don't keep the law, the Judaic Mosaic law, don't keep that. Circumcision, observing certain feasts and, and, and days and certain things, don't do those things because those are foreshadows of things to come, which is Jesus Christ. Now that Christ is here, we are justified by faith. Okay, now a lot of false grace teachers, a lot of super grace teachers like to harp on this fact. Oh, we're saved by grace. See, grace, grace, grace. You know, no, not a works, not a works. We're justified not by the law. Of course, we're not justified by the law. But Paul was talking about we're not justified by the Mosaic Judaic law of circumcision, keeping the feast and all these things. But he said, we are to keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is clear in the Gospels. In the new covenant, we are to keep the faith in Jesus Christ through obedience by faith. Without obedience, there's no salvation. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9 says it very clear. Jesus Christ has become the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. So if you don't obey Jesus, my friends, if you're still living in sin today, if you're of the belief that you have this grace from God, you have this finished work of Christ, that you're the, you know, this elect from God, there's nothing about you and you can just keep sinning and you don't have the desire for holiness. You don't have the desire to pursue righteousness. And yet you are of the belief because you've been told and you heard sermons of pastors telling you that you are fine. You don't have to repent of your sins. It's just about grace. It's all about grace. It's nothing about returning from your sin. You know, let me tell you something. This, please, please listen to me. This is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the false gospel that the, the devil has sowed the wheat among the tares, uh, sowed tares among the wheat. It's a false gospel. It will not get you saved. And one day, if you keep on believing that way, you'll be like the governor Felix. We're gonna, gonna come to a point where you don't, you don't even want to hear about the things of righteousness. You don't want to hear about self-control, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You don't want to hear about the judgment that is to come, which is coming. I know of Christians who tell you blank in the face, I don't want to hear about the judgment of God. God is just love. God is just love. Of course God is love, for God so loved the world. But if you read lower, read, follow John 3.16. What does it say after, at the end, if you read the entire John 3? It says that those who don't believe are already condemned. Those who walk in darkness do not want to come into the light. And this is their condemnation. Don't just quote the scripture as Jesus saying, I did not come to judge. Okay, there's also another scripture in John chapter 9 that says, Jesus says, For judgment I have come to this earth, so that those who claim to see are made blind, and those who are blind may see. Jesus was clearly saying those who think that they're spiritual, those who think that they're religious, Okay, they are the ones that he has come to judge. For judgment, I have come to this world. 
John chapter 9. So don't say that Jesus never said he come to judge. Jesus came to judge. But the way he came to judge is through his word. He says, he doesn't believe in me. John chapter 12, I don't judge him. But the, the words that I've spoken will judge him in the last day. So, so for the people who says that, oh, we don't need to look at the gospels. The people who always take the epistles out of context. Oh my goodness. I don't, all I can do is pray. Because I am in fear of people in, in such positions. I am, I am absolutely in fear of them. And uh, for those of you who say, Oh, well, you know, see, you're not made perfect in love. Because you're fearing, you know, you have, you're saying you fear God. Well, let me tell you something. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And Jesus says, Do not fear Him who can kill the body and do nothing afterwards, the devil. But fear Him who can kill the body and cast that body into hell. Fear Him, said Jesus. The person, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who many claim today, yet deny His words. How tragic and how depressing and how sad is that? And let us pray, if you love Jesus, let us pray that the church of Jesus Christ would arise to righteousness, would arise to purity of heart and of holiness and of obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the commandments given by our Lord Jesus Christ, to feed the poor, clothe the naked, to provide the least of these, to... to, 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 um, to um, speak words of truth, let her yes be yes, to obey the commandments of Jesus Christ and all the things that he talked about. Let us do that because the pure and holy bride who will enter into the kingdom of heaven is exactly those who are the five wise virgins who keep extra oils in their lamp, those who obey the commandments of Jesus Christ. May it be, you and I, that we will never come to a point like this governor Felix, that when we hear about the judgment of God that is to come, when we hear about righteousness, when we hear about self-control, may it never be to a point where we're so, where we have rejected the Holy Spirit so much that we can't even respond to the Holy Spirit anymore. There's a real life testimony of a minister that I've heard recently who know of this celebrity and he was praying for the celebrity. He's like, and, and, and from what I recall, I think this celebrity actually in the past have received different ministering from different people of God. But he has come to a point now, he's so backslidden, he's doing the things of the world, and this minister is praying for the celebrity. And God talked to this, uh, showed this um, uh, minister. He says, there's really no point of praying for this celebrity. There's no point of praying for him because there's nothing, because he says, he has rejected me so much that there is nothing left in him to respond to my Holy Spirit. There's nothing left in that person, that celebrity, to respond to my Holy Spirit, says, says God. Can you imagine how tragic that is? Because that person have seared his conscience so many times. Even when people minister to him, telling him to repent, to believe in God. And how many today believe that they're fine with God? How many today are living lives of the Laodicean church in Revelation 13, whose destruction, whose, whose uh, coming... Um, Outcome will be destruction, as Jesus says, He will vomit them out of their mouths. Yet they still think we are in need of nothing. We have everything. And yet Jesus says, you're poor, blind, naked, and wretched. How many of us today are living that life, that life and think we're okay because you're people and quote-unquote ministers telling us that we are fine? <sighs> Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what John the Baptist said, crying out in the wilderness. That's what Jesus said when he first came on the scene preaching a sermon. Repent. That's the message, guys. And so, may we first always to remember, first ourselves to come before God and say, God, I repent hands of my sins. Now, I don't want to just give you lip service and telling you I repent, I repent, and yet keep on sinning, Lord God. And this is what I pray. You know, God, I don't want just to be forgiven. I want to be forgiven, but I don't just want to be forgiven. I want to be delivered. I don't want to be in the sin anymore. God, give me a desire for a hatred of sin, for a hatred of unrighteousness. And you got to get radical to things, but give me a, a desire for holiness. Give me for a desire for the things of God. Give me for a desire for righteousness and holiness. That's how we need to pray right now. Not just, you know, how God bless me this, bless me that. Not just how God give me grace this, give me grace that. Not just God, how forgive me this, forgive me that. But you never put in any type of spiritual discipline. You never read the Word of God. You never spend, you know, time to pray, pray 
uh, before God and with Him and hear from Him and you don't do anything and all you want is just to take, 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 take and you never want to give glory and to worship and praise to the King of Kings who is worthy to be praised. There's no time for, for lives to be lived in such a fashion, guys, because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we are at the end of the age. All the signs are pointing to the fact that the Great Tribulation can happen anytime. The U.S. economy is by design, will crumble. I've made another video, you go watch it. The, there are informants from Department of Homeland Security knowing that the U.S. economy will crash very likely. Could be even by the end of this year, many things will change. It will start by Euro being... Um, uh, being crumbled, then the US dollar will collapse, then there'll be riots and civil war in the streets, and even prophecies like Dmitry Dudeman talking about when there's internal riots in the United States, then the Chinese and the Russians are going to attack the nuclear facilities in, in America, okay, and there's going to be a nuclear war. There's very likely to be the third world war that we have. And not to mention all the calamities that are coming, all the earthquakes and tsunamis that God has given to many people, and even scientists notice that the next huge California earthquake, um, perhaps also the, the, the Madrid fall in, in the middle of America, and even other places, volcanoes erupting, and many different earthquakes, not just the many things coming. And the coming deception, okay, the fallen angels returning, just like what the History Channels are talking about, these aliens coming back. Okay, these are just fallen angels. Read Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. Okay, fallen angels. There's going to come a time in the book of Revelation. It says that the devil is cast down from heaven and his wrath is going to be poured out on the earth. Okay, okay. There's going to be the wrath of God. But there's also the wrath of the devil because he knows his time is short. Okay, the locust that comes up from the, the bottomless pit for five months torturing the people. Oh my goodness, guys, we are at that brink where everything will break loose now. And all hell will break loose now. And yet we have, and yet today we have complacent, we have complacent preaching, complacent living. And, bef and before I point the finger, I guarantee you, this is something that I have searched in my heart for a long time, and I continue to do that. Because, because, because I know Okay, Paul says it is fearful to fall in the hands of the living God. Do I fear God? Yes. Do I love God? Yes. But there is a balance of fear and love for God. And so guys, I want to tell you, judgment that is to come is already here. It won't take very long until all these things fall in front of our eyes. And, and, and the unfortunate thing is that the majority of people are those who will respond to calamities. They don't prepare for it because their eyes are fixing on things of this life. They're worried about the next show that's going to go on TV. They're worrying about how I can, I don't know, invest in another stock, make, expand my portfolio, get more retirement savings, whatever it is. I don't even know what to say anymore. I just, I just pray that there will never come a time especially for you and for me, never come a time that we'll be like that celebrity where God says there's nothing left in that person to respond to my Holy Spirit. And you know what, you know what that means? It means that there's no salvation. And all that is left is Hebrews chapter 10. All that is left is that there is a fearful expectation of the judgment to come and the fiery indignation. That's a fearful thought. And so may we pray right now, may we pray right now that we will walk in a narrow path that leads to life. That when we hear words of preaching, like Paul saying, reasoning about righteousness, reasoning about uh, self-control, reasoning about the judgments that come, may our hearts be filled with the fear of God and that we come before God and say, God, I want to humble myself. And at the same time, when you work in my heart, Lord, let me also experience your love. I pray that. I'm like, God, show me, show me your love. Let me experience your love, but also do not allow me to lose the fear of you because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and there's no lack for those who fear Him, who fear God. And the angels of the Lord encamp around all those who fear Him. May we have both the fear of God and the love of God at this hour because surely the coming of the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords is at hand. Why don't we pray right now? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of your most precious Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for what you've done across for us, Jesus. 
But God, we don't want to trample your blood underfoot. We don't want to take your name in vain. We don't want to take your grace and your gospel in vain. We don't want to depart. We don't want to be those who are not overcomers. But I pray in the name of Jesus right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray, Heavenly Father, for the person who's watching this video, including myself, I pray that we will be overcomers, that we will be those who pursue righteousness, that we will be those who exercise self-control in our lives, that we will be those who are looking forward for your coming, and that we will be those who will always keep our minds that the judgment of you, Lord God, are coming. And because of that, Lord God, help us to live always, striving to have a pure conscience before you and before men, so that when we live a life of good works, people will give glory to you, my Heavenly Father. We thank you so much for this word of truth that you've given us. We thank you for the, the apostles of faith that you've shown us in the Bible to show us how to live. And I pray, Heavenly Father, if there's any person watching this video right now that's backslidden, or whether they just sin against you, Lord God, or even those who never considered following after you, Jesus, I pray, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus right now, work in their hearts right now. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of belief. I bind the every demonic spirit that try to come against this person, to turning their lives back to Jesus. I break your power. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I lose the warrior angels right now in the name of Jesus to work and to fight for this person. Lord God, that his salvation may be sure through knowing you, Jesus, through repenting of their sins and trusting in you by faith. And that God, I ask that your blood will wash him or her clean and that they will continue to walk in a path of righteousness and of holiness until you come back. And I pray that for the person watching and for myself, Lord God, we look forward for your coming. Hallelujah. We look forward for that day, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And we say, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. When he